Now look who's here, Wall Street Journal investigative reporters Brody Mullins and John West. You guys did a terrific job. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This uh, investigative reporting you did about thousands of top government officials trading stock, doing options trading, even short selling in the companies they regulate and enforce. Brody, first to you, what, what surprised you when you, when you guys dug deep into the story? What really hit you hard about this story? You know, it's really what didn't surprise us. I mean, it was amazing how much uh, stock trading we found. I mean, we looked at 50 different federal agencies. We looked at thousands and thousands of employees and their stock trading reports over the last five years. And we just found tons and tons of people, in fact, thousands of people, who were trading stocks in companies uh, that they oversaw at their jobs. It was really stunning. What do you say, John, I mean, to what Brody is saying? I mean, we're talking like one out of four top FTC officials own or trade stocks in the same tech giants that they regulate? That's, I mean, yes, that, that's right. I mean, it, it, actually, it, it goes a little deeper than that. I mean, if you look at the FTC, for example, one in three actually um, were trading or owning stocks that uh, of, in companies that had business before the FTC, whether it was a merger or a case, an active case going on. Uh, so it, it actually is, is, is quite stunning. And, and just to echo something Brody said, I mean, we looked at, you know, the financial filing, 31,000 financial filings from 12,000 senior government employees, and we found that one in five of those people were trading stocks in companies that were, were actively lobbying their agency. You know, so why those same companies, to John, what John just said, Brody, why they're lobbying for lucrative government contracts or favorable re regulation, I mean, your deep dive, you guys did sterling work here. There, I, how is this possible that they're allowed to be doing trading or short selling or even options trading? Well, that's a great question. Um, Congress created uh, several decades ago very, very strong rules that, that said that you're not allowed to own stock in companies um, that you regulate. Um, but uh, those rules, unfortunately, have tons of loopholes, exemptions. And one of them is that the, the government only considers a conflict if you own more than $15,000 of a company. So if you own $14,000 in Apple, you know, for example, uh, you're allowed to write laws uh, or deal with policy uh, regarding Apple. Um, there's plenty of other exemptions so that almost all the examples we found, those thousands of people, the vast majority, are actually in compliance with the law. You know, to, so what Brody's saying, by the way, it brings up the lucrative stock trades by Nancy Pelosi's husband. House Democrats are slamming Pelosi for blockading their bipartisan bill to stop stock trading in Congress. But, John, what you and Brody have done, you know what it also feels like? Remember the Boston Globe with the movie Spotlight? They did shoe leather journalism. They dove into the documents to find out what was really going on. That's what the sterling work you guys did. This is investigative journalism. I mean, we're seeing government workers at Homeland Security and the IRS stealing millions of dollars in pandemic relief money, John. So when you sat back, tell us what agencies, what top senior officials, John, what agencies are we talking about? Well, we looked at 50 total agencies over a six-year time span. And those agencies included FTC, as we talked about before. It included DOT, Department of Transportation. It included Justice. It included virtually, uh, well, not virtually every major agency, but a lot of major agencies. Uh, we, we did not uh, receive, at the time of publication, any filings from DHS, unfortunately. So they were not were not included in the analysis, which we point out in the story. But but we do we did get you know filings from from 50 federal agencies, and 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 I, I will say to your point about Spotlight, I mean there was a whole team here at the Journal, and we, we were doing a lot of work to to scrub through those 31,000 documents. I mean that's I over a it. million assets and transactions, and we used uh, computer software to to help us, and that was that was, I think really an important part of this project was that we had to manually spot check and and verify all that data that was coming through. Yeah, it's like it's really I'm. I'm not kidding, it's heroic stuff. Spotlight was a movie about the Catholic Church sex abuse scandals. Brody, your final word in this, what do you find most disturbing and concerning about your, what yeah, you found? You know, just some top line numbers. Um, at the Environment, Environmental Protection Agency, we had people owning oil and gas stocks in Exxon. And at um, the Food and Drug Administration, we had people owning food and drug stocks. Um, at the Department of Defense, someone was buying defense contractors before the de Defense Department was giving them a big contract. Uh, the list went on and on. What do you say, John? What do you find most disturbing and concerning? I find the, the, the broad sweep of it. I mean, everything Brody said is absolutely correct, but I would also add that the broad sweep of the thing, I mean, we were looking at one in five. Again, one in five senior government employees holding stock or trading stock in companies that were how, actually lobbying them. How high up were those employees? How, how far up the food chain? 
So it goes everything from from the the SES service, which is kind of a select uh, career staff, all the way up to uh, to people who are p political appointees, as well as you know people who file reports with the Office of Governmental Wait Assets OGE. You're talking about people in the offices of the secretary of different agencies or running the agencies doing this. Well, uh, sorry, it's it's senior career government employees as well as presidential appointees to okay. these agencies. Okay. All right. We're, we're Go ahead, finish your thoughts. We're looking at 12,000 of the most senior people in the government. These are people whose names you don't know, whose titles you don't know, but these are people who are running the guts of the executive branch. Wow, gosh, what a story, incredible stuff. Brody Mellons and John West, congratulations on really, truly terrific, sterling investigative journalism. We'll have you back on. It's good to see you. Thanks for bringing us the story.